Hi, I'm Daniel Fisher here at Sweetwater. On today's synth clips, we're going to talk about oscillator sync. Sync is short for synchronization. And when I started this series, I made it really clear that I didn't want to do graphs, I didn't want to do math, I didn't want to do electronics, I didn't want to do circuitry. I really just want this to all be about sound. And so today I'm going to talk about this not with any of those things. I may wiggle my hand up and down a little bit, but, but mostly I just want you to use your ear to hear how this works. And if you've watched the whole series, um, you'll see that that's kind of how I'm doing everything is. I want you to just pick a knob, move it from min to max, and find an area where you like it, and use something to control it to move between those two points. And if you do that to every parameter, you're going to have a sound that you like, guaranteed. So today we're going to do oscillator sync. And again, I'm not going to go into great detail what it is, but a little bit about what it is, is it basically was originally designed to lock the frequency of one oscillator to another. And that may not be something you worry about much today, but in the 1960s, that was a big deal. It was very hard to make one oscillator stay perfectly in tune with another oscillator. And so one of the roles of oscillator sync was to do that. And just very quickly, the way it would do it is, as one wave is going up and down, um, every time it would start over, it would force the other wave to start over regardless of where it was. And so at least within a cycle, they're going to be starting over at the same time, and that's going to get them pretty darn close in tune. And it turns out that if you keep trying to force the poor oscillator that's synced to the other oscillator, if you keep trying to force it out of pitch, um, within one cycle it has to keep resetting to uh, the original start point of the first oscillator, and that makes these really interesting harmonic things, and as you sweep the frequency, you're going to hear it run through the harmonic series uh, that's uh, in that wave shape. Again, I don't want to talk a lot about that, I just want to do it. So I'm here with the Siren Analog Messenger of Joy. It's a monophonic, true analog synthesizer from Moog. Uh, it's very similar to the Minotaur. It just has a higher top end range and not quite as far of a note range down on the bottom. Um, but they're both great for bass. Uh, and this one is also great for high leads as well. And uh, I'm going to start with just one oscillator. Uh, this is kind of in my init mode where um, it's just one oscillator on saw. I have just a little bit of release time, but a, an instant attack, a full-on sustain. Now I can add the second oscillator, and that is a much prettier sound. Because as you hear, those two oscillators being slightly detuned, you get that nice phasing. And the more I detune it, the more phasing you get. At some point, it gets a little obnoxious. But then I can get to like a perfect fifth and it'll sound nice again. Okay, but we're not gonna do that. We're gonna use oscillator sync. And uh, the siren has, uh, some front panel controls, it has some hidden key press controls, but to really dig deep into it, you have to use the Siren Editor Librarian, that's free with it. But some of them I can do, and the first one I can do is turn Oscillator Sync on Oscillator 2. And the trick is to that, you hold Glide, and you simply turn the VCO2 level all the way to the right. If you go all the way to the left, it turns it off, all the way to the right turns it on. And so now, and I'm gonna turn the volume of VCO1 off, so now you're only hearing Oscillator 2 sounds normal. But listen now as I try to force it out of pitch. Uh, a modern example, if you've ever seen any of those YouTube videos where the poor robots that look like dogs and the guy keeps trying to knock it over with a stick and it keeps writing itself, that's kind of what this is doing. So listen as I turn the frequency, instead of it changing pitch, well maybe I'll, I'll go without it first. So as I change the pitch, Okay, but now I'm gonna turn oscillator sync on. Again, that's glide with VCO2 level turned up. Now as I turn it, you are gonna hear that pitch uh, that I swept through just a second ago, but you're gonna hear it in the form of a strong harmonic against the original pitch of the other oscillator, which I currently have turned down. And listen to this sound.
Now, on the siren, I can make oscillator two be an octave up or an octave down, so that's the most that we're hearing this go. But on some other synthesizers, as high as that oscillator two will go, it'll sweep all the way up into those harmonics as well. And as you can hear, uh, I can use it as a tone shaping device. I can put it somewhere. And, and that kind of gives me an interesting sound. Uh, it sounds a little bit like FM, um, but it's very static. It's standing very still. And the thing that makes oscillator sync exciting is moving this knob in real time. And I can do it by hand. Okay, but what's better is having something else do it. And so the first thing I'm going to do is use an LFO to wiggle the pitch of oscillator two. Well, here's a problem. Uh, on the siren, uh, in default mode, the LFO goes to both oscillators. That's not what I want. I need oscillator two moving all by itself. So hold glide and turn the VCO LFO mount all the way to the right, and now, it does the second thing you need to do to get oscillator sync really alive, and that is one, turn it on, and two, have something that moves only oscillator two's pitch. So now you're gonna only hear um, those harmonics sweeping. And like everything else I've been showing you, when you find something you like, and you find its min and you find its max that you like, you can now use an amount to say how much it's doing it, and then you can use the main knob to do where that amount is in the whole thing. So if I do just a little bit of oscillator sync, now you can hear it's up here, but now listen as I, I lower it. I can make it very subtle. And if I want, I can have mod wheel, or in this case, mod slider. I should mention, by the way, uh, that I'm using the Keystep Pro by Arturia. Um, I just got it, I really like it. I'm very happy to say that I plugged it in and it's doing what I thought it would do, which is one of my favorite things for equipment to do. Um, and the mod wheel is a touch strip. And uh, on the siren, if you set an LFO amount, but then touch the mod wheel, the amount goes to zero until you move the mod wheel again. So let's, let's find something that I like. Okay, let's say I like that. Now I touch the mod wheel, and all of a sudden, the depth goes to zero as well, and it'll come back up if I move the mod wheel out. Now, the first thing that I might wanna play with is trying different LFO wave shapes. You can't do that from the front panel of the Siren, but there is a Siren editor. Um, I have mine on a MacBook Pro, and if I look at this application, I can see basically what I'm seeing on my front panel. But if I go to the under the hood mode, now here are a whole bunch of extra features that aren't available from the front panel. And so the first one that I'll play with is wave shapes. So I'm gonna turn this up again. And instead of a triangle up and down, I'll do square. So this is gonna be very choppy between two different harmonics. Okay, that's square wave. Now I'll do um, sawtooth. So it's gonna go up quickly, but then down at an angle. And that'll give me a very nice rhythmic kind of a pulse, but in harmonics. Now you notice I can't predict without listening to the rhythm of the LFO exactly when that LFO is gonna start. So back on my editor, I turn on key trigger. Now that sawtooth, every time I hit a key, the LFO sawtooth is gonna immediately start at the beginning and then fall. And yet it's still an LFO, so I get to hear it multiple times. So if I use the mod wheel again, I could use that almost as a, the same way I would use vibrato, but like a harmonic vibrato.
Okay, and now we'll try another one. Here's a sawtooth uh, in the other direction. We'll call it a ramp. And then we'll go to random. This one's very interesting. So now we're gonna randomly hear harmonics as that second oscillator's going to different pitches, but again being uh, oscillator synced back to the original oscillator. And that sounds really cool, but to really enjoy it, you gotta put it through some delay or some reverb or combination of the two to let you hear all of those harmonics hang out in time in, a, in an ambient way. And so I have the Collider Delay and Reverb by Source Audio. Um, I've been using the delay a lot. I just got the delay and reverb as well, and it's very cool to have both delay and reverb at the same time. Both are true stereo and stereo out, and that allows me to do the ping pong that I love, but also have a reverb as well. Now I'm gonna mix the oscillator that this one is synced to. I've been having it at, at uh, zero volume, but now when I bring them to the other oscillator, I'll turn the delay off a second. When I bring up the other oscillator, you still get those harmonic things, but now you get the nice solid regular oscillator as well. <laughs> In fact, if I wanted this just to be a mild effect, I could lower the level of the oscillator that's synced. And with some echo. So that's what it sounds like with an LFO, but let's say you don't want the repeating uh, sweeping of the harmonics. Let's say you just want a single shot. Well, now you want an envelope. Um, some synths allow you to set your LFO to one shot, and that will, especially with a sawtooth, give you a one shot of, of a simple envelope. But if you want a slightly more complex envelope, um, you're gonna assign maybe your filter envelope, or if you have an additional envelope that, uh, that's not amp or filter, you can assign that to the pitch of the oscillator that is synced, and it will do the same thing. On the siren, you use the application, and you choose filter EG, or envelope generator, filter envelope generator. So now, it's going to sweep the pitch, and let me turn off the first oscillator again so now you can hear this. So, with this amount all the way at zero, it sounds like this. And as I turn it up, you're going to hear it sweep through those harmonics. And it's gonna be exactly at the same rate that I set my envelope. So I could make it happen very quickly. And the depth of it is now controlled by the mod wheel. And now let's hear that first with some delay. And because I'm using an envelope, I can make the ending point while I'm holding the key be a certain harmonic. So now it's gonna always go to there. I can make that go all the way down to zero. Increase the decay time. And a little bit of attack time is nice too, because now you get a pwion, right? 
kind of sounds a little bit like a squeezy toy. Now, if you've seen other episodes, you know that I've talked about envelopes and legato mode where uh, things only happen uh, when you have no keys pressed and so you can make an envelope trigger, but if you hold a note and then press another note before you let go of the previous note, you get legato mode where the pitch changes but the envelope doesn't trigger. Well, if your envelopes are triggering this oscillator sync effect, you can also only have the oscillator sync when you don't play legato. So right now I'm set to legato on, and that's how this is gonna work. I can get it every time, but if I play legato, I'll turn my glide off, and I'll turn my amp sustain up so the note stays loud. See, so legato, it doesn't do that. And when I detach my notes, it does do that. So that's a useful thing. Or if you turn legato off, now every single time, it's going to restrike it. Really depends on, on what you're doing. And so I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go now, set that legato back on again, and uh, show you a little bit of that with some reverb instead of delay, simply because I have it here, so why not? And now the last thing I'll do with it, since I have it here, is I will do some arpeggiation. So I got my arp on, I put my hold on, and some arpeggiation. Now the same thing, but without filter envelope, now I'm going to use the random, which can be very interesting on an arpeggiation because now you got random harmonics, key triggered, so that every new note is giving you a different harmonic. And uh, I'll start without delay. recognize that sound, that's kind of like the see and say, or the speak and spell. And now adding the first oscillator, which isn't oscillator syncing. A little bit of reverb. Maybe a little delay. All right, so now I have the Moog Matriarch semi-modular analog synthesizer. And I chose this one because it has four oscillators and three of them can sync. And this one's a little different in that oscillator one uh, is the master and oscillator two syncs to one, but oscillator three syncs to two and oscillator four syncs to three. So a lot of possibilities there, especially with different modes of porophony. So first I'll show you without sync. Um, I'm using four different octaves on the oscillators. I've got them all turned up about the same volume. Makes a famous sound. And I'm gonna turn the delay off. And, and you can hear uh, the drift between the oscillators, which is a pleasant thing. But if I wanted to, I, I mean, clearly you can hear that they're not perfectly in tune, and again, that's a nice thing. But if I were to 
turn each of these individual sync buttons on and then the sync enable button for good or for bad, that makes the frequency relationship very stable because it's oscillator syncing. All right, so now I'm just going to have oscillator two syncing to oscillator one. So I have that button pressed, I have sync enabled. And now listen as I sweep through the harmonic series. And like before, I can use anything to sweep that. For example, if I were to take a triangle out, and go to the pitch in of oscillator two, you're gonna hear that sweeping sound. It's gonna be a little dramatic, as I said. So first I'm gonna go into an attenuator to make less of that, and then take the output of the attenuator into the pitch. And now I should be able to get it pretty subtle if I want it. And like before, um, whenever I'm sweeping something, I have two choices here. I have my uh, LFO that has a rate, obviously, but it has a depth, so I'm setting a depth amount. But then by changing the pitch of the actual oscillator, I'm now moving that sweeping range somewhere else. So I'm gonna make it a subtle sweep. And now listen as I uh, move that into a different range. I can do that with a square wave, and then I'll just get to the original, and then. And with a little echo. This one has four oscillators total, and so I could do some really interesting things by having each of them synchronized. So first, without any modulation, I can have different harmonics layered over each other. So I'm gonna go into a single voice mode. I have all four oscillators up. I have the oscillator sync off at the moment. Okay, and they're reasonably tuned, I'm not gonna worry about it because I'm about to turn oscillator sync on. But listen how I can first set uh, oscillator two. Say I like that. Then I'm gonna turn that one off, turn up oscillator three and sync that one. And oscillator four. And maybe even change octave. Definitely, I'm, I'm creating wave shapes that you wouldn't typically associate with analog synthesis, having just a saw, sine, triangle, square. Um, these are some unique uh, wave shapes. And, and I could play with wave shapes as well. And now, by patching in, um, maybe I'll patch this triangle out again into an attenuator and out of that attenuator into one of the oscillators. But then maybe yet another LFO. 
into yet another attenuator, into a different oscillator. And now we should have some pretty interesting motion. put it into four voice of porophony. Uh, not even sure what I'm gonna get here, but we're gonna try it. And that's kind of the key of oscillator sync is, have fun, experiment. You're gonna find something unique. Um, and it will definitely sound unlike anything that people who don't play with uh, oscillator sync could possibly get. You, you need it to get that sound. Anyway, I hope this gives you a quick idea and gives you some confidence to go start playing with oscillator sync on your own. If you're enjoying this synth clip series, uh, please check out our playlist. Uh, please comment if you have any ideas for what you would like to see a synth clip on, send it to us. I'll do my best to do it. Uh, this is going to be a long running series. If you have any questions about uh, the Moog Siren or the Moog Matriarch, please contact your Sweetwater sales engineer. My name is Daniel Fisher. Thank you very much for watching.